Speaking of horses, a football team named for a kind of a horse, a colt, they're having an issue right now. And this thing is oh. like – by the minute, yeah. getting worse and worse and worse and right. worse. And I think I have a feeling why. I probably will make that clear over the course of the next several minutes. I think we know so, why. So this all starts, and we didn't know that there was any issue between Jonathan Taylor and the Colts. And last week when we were so focused on the running back conundrum, one of the arguments I made as it relates to specific individuals trying to create leverage, the best time to get your new contract is after your third season when the window opens. That's when Ezekiel Elliott held out and got a great contract for him. Christian McCaffrey got a great contract without having to hold out after three seasons. Now he had 1,000 rushing yards and 1,000 receiving yards in his third season, only the third guy ever to do it, along with Marshall Falk and Roger Craig. So easier for him to get his contract. Jonathan Taylor missed six games yeah, last year. Right, He's not Was making not the himself. same strength of closing argument. Yeah. So he didn't hold out. And I thought, okay, you know, it's kind of hard to take a stand. Even though he had 1,811 rushing yards in year two and 20 total touchdowns, it's hard to take a stand now. So it's fine. He gets it. Everything's fine. Then as the week went on, we found out it's not fine. And it all started with that very ill-advised tweet, or whatever they're called now, from Jim Ursay. One night last week, Wednesday, I believe, where he chimed in on the running back situation and he suggested bad faith by agents and they're trying to go back and renegotiate a settled CBA. No CBA is ever settled. Everything is subject to further negotiation and change. So he had a a flimsy argument in multiple respects, but he gets involved in this thing and pisses people off and apparently pissed off Jonathan Taylor. Of course. So it just went downhill from there. And, you know... It's funny. I've said this before. And let me go ahead and say it again, just in case anyone out there either didn't hear it or has forgotten it. A lot of times what we will say as I have a feeling or or we couch it as a guess, we know, but we've been told how we can properly articulate it without getting anyone in hot water. When Stephen Holder of ESPN.com floated the idea of Jonathan Taylor possibly demanding a trade on Friday night, that got my antenna. Up. Yeah, oh yeah. Because that's just not it something he's real. pulling out of the right. air. Exactly. Right. And and it's and it it was couched as theory and speculation. And there was a quote from Taylor back in June where he said, "You can see why some guys demand trades." But I wrote about it on Saturday afternoon because it's like that. this one feels like it's a dart that's going to be pretty close to the bullseye. And by Saturday night, meeting between Ursay and Taylor on his bus when it's over, word gets out that Taylor wants a trade. And Ursay tells multiple reporters via text they're not going to trade him, no way, no how. And that that's where we were as of Saturday night. It got worse on Sunday, but that's where we were as of Saturday night, Chris. And, I mean, really, you get to that point, guy wants traded, team refuses to trade him. There isn't a whole lot the guy can do after he's already shown up. Can't walk out. If you walk out, they can shut you down for the whole year and you don't play for anybody. So... They got a mess right now, and yeah. I don't know that they can figure this out, especially because Jim Irsay, in my opinion, has not handled this situation very well at all. No, well, I think that's that that's where you start it, right? I mean, you know, again, Jim, Jim Irsay, you know, we have fun. He's done a lot of great things as an owner, but this is one where I just would go, well, why? Well, what was the point of tweeting some of that stuff out? What, what what benefit did that do to your football team? What benefit did it do to help your relationship with Jonathan Taylor and suit things over? I mean, none of it. It actually did the exact opposite. And why are you tweeting anyways? You're the owner. You know, some of these issues, you're just above it. You shouldn't even be involved in, you know, the pissants uh, conversations that are going on out there. That's where I don't get that. So, yeah, from that standpoint, to me, it's questionable leadership. And then it's questionable leadership on a sensitive topic right now, right? Coming from a guy who's got everything and, you know, $9 million guitars and whatever else. And then here's a guy who's going, wait, I'm the best player on your offense. And, wait, there's a lot of us out here. And this is a conversation that's publicly going on in front of us in the public forum. And, yeah, it was a bad timing and sensitive. And sensitive personally to one person who's very important to your football team and the most talented part of your football team. And yet, yeah, you kind of take a below the belt jab at it and, and, and put a little gasoline on the fire when it just wasn't necessary. You know, so that's where I don't understand that. And yeah, this seems like it's uh, 
in a bad place right now. And I don't know where it goes uh, as, as it stands, but yeah, Jonathan Taylor's mad. He is. But I don't know if there's anything he can gain out of this like you talked about. I just find it funny, too, because there's no worth for the tailbacks, but yet these teams realize, wait, this guy's really worth a lot to us right now, but we don't want to pay him. But the running backs have no leverage to stand on the negotiate or find a way out of this. And, yeah, this could get this could get ugly or a little messy or at least be a distraction here for the Colts uh, over the next month or so. Oh, it all of a sudden becomes the pot that is boiling most aggressively in the NFL. And there's some wisdom in potentially giving him an opportunity to go out and try to seek a trade because yeah. then he'll find out that whatever he's trying to get from the Colts, other teams may not give him that same amount either. And that's what may be at the core of this. I've heard from a few different people that his agent, Malki Kawa, may have made – and yeah. I don't know this to be the case, and I'm going to debunk – this theory in a second. Okay. The theory is he made a promise to Jonathan Taylor, 16 million years, the number that's rocketing around. That's top of the market right now for Christian McCaffrey. That's not unreasonable. I heard that's what Saquon Barkley was trying to get. Yeah. 16. If 16 is top of the market and the salary cap keeps going up and up and up, why isn't somebody who's among the best at the position in the league trying to get 16? So there's frustration about the agent. Here's why I don't buy that. Because Ursay would have said something now, more than just bad faith by agents when talking about the entire right. running back position. He would have called this guy out by now. He would have said, we're fine with Jonathan Taylor. It's his agent that's a problem. That that would already, I think, have come from a text, a conversation, or a tweet from Jim Ursay because he can't help himself. He doesn't have a filter when it comes to nuance, when it comes to subtlety, when it comes to not making things worse. So I can't imagine that he would say all this crap that pisses off Jonathan Taylor and stop short of saying, it's not Taylor, it's his agent. Well, Why wouldn't Ursay just say that if that's what they believe? Well, maybe, you know, I, I don't doubt you, doubt you. You know, I mean, he has never been gun shy, for lack of a better phrase, as far as saying things like that. Maybe he put out that first tweet, though, and realized, wait, that wasn't the best, so let me not take a personal shot of the agent now, too, and inflame things a little bit more. I could certainly see that happening, you know. But also, I could also see him going, ah, I'll give a crap, and just sending the t tweet out, too. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, either way, I think it's fair to say, you know, one, yeah, I, it's fair to maybe connect the dots between that uh, that tweet and bad faith and that. Also, I think it's fair to say that obviously some of the running back agents did not gauge the running back market the right way. I mean, th th that that's real. There's no doubt about that. So I don't think you can deny that either. So he's not totally off base there with that. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that kills me about this conversation where Jonathan Taylor, by by all, I, we support you. Try to be traded, sure, but like like you just talked about, it's it's a little late in the game now. You know, like we've talked about with Saquon Barkley last week. They had money allotted for him at one point. It didn't work out. They gave it to Daniel Jones, and they said, wait, the same offer's not on the table. You know, it's going to be hard for any running back on the free market right now, which isn't really a free market because a lot of these teams' market places are already got a lot of money in the, in the places they need it. They're not going to be able to go out and get what they could in the offseason. So that's where it stinks for Jonathan Taylor, too. You know, so how hard does he want to push that issue? How hard does he want to piss, piss the Colts off, right? And that's, that's where I don't know where this stands. I could tell you one thing. The Colts are not going to trade Jonathan Taylor for, for, for nothing. That, that's for sure. I mean, here we are. Anthony Richardson, they just got this offense. They're going to run the Jalen Hurts Philadelphia Eagles offense. How are you going to make this raw quarterback work? Oh, right, right. We got one of the, the best, most talented running backs in football back here he's going to help the offense and the development of our hopeful superstar quarterback so they're going to hold him hostage too because he's so important to the development of many things the head coach and the quarterback here right now but the flip side of that would be hey NFL teams if you think that star running backs shouldn't be paid because you can easily replace them supply outweighs demand Shane Steichen coming from Philly where they're using a revolving door yeah. committee approach you don't need that's Jonathan what I'm Taylor saying to make this that's go. what I'm kind of saying throw a rock they're kind of talking out of both back. yeah they're kind of talking out of, out, of, out, of, out of both sides of their mouth here they are the, their NFL teams are I, I agree with you that's what I was trying to kind of say they're kind of trying to say hey we don't want to pay you but whoa you're really important to us 
We don't want to pay you, but damn, we need you, Saquon. And that just goes back to our conversation once again of the running backs don't got jack diddly squat to to hold leverage here. And then, of course, there's some other factors here that, that go into it as well. But, yeah, that's what's weird about the conversation, Mike, with the, that point you're making, too. No doubt about it. And I don't want to criticize the agent because I think he's dealing with an unusual owner relative to the others in the NFL. But this is a hell of a time to try to make it all happen. This is a March conversation, not an it's crazy. August, late July conversation. Jonathan because, Taylor and Zach Martin. As you I'm mentioned, like, what? everybody's right. spent their money. Right. Everybody's spent their money. Right. Everybody's got their rosters set. I don't think he's going to find. That's why I think there's wisdom in letting him try to find a trade partner. Yeah. Because right. I don't think he's going to find what he wants yeah. right now. Period. So I don't know how they bridge this divide. And as I said earlier, it only got worse from Saturday night. That was the comment from Jim Ursay when he tried to clean up on aisle five after he pissed everyone off with his Wednesday tweet. He says it wasn't really directed to Jonathan. We haven't exchanged any contract numbers. That's when it went next level. Like, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jim, Jim, you're burying the lead here. You haven't given the guy an offer on a long-term deal. He's entering the final year of his rookie contract and you haven't even given him an offer yet. Are you serious? Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.